Item Update 5 is here, and with it comes the biggest performance improvement I've ever seen in a game or sim. But at what cost? Let's go and check out the good, the bad, and the ugly in this update. Hey guys, Clumsy here. Welcome back to Microsoft Flight Simulator. Oh my goodness, the biggest news ever. Sim Update 5 for PC and also including the Xbox Series S and X release. But for this video, I'll be focusing on the PC aspect of things. Because uh, PC Master Race, right? <laughs> Sorry, not sorry. Uh, anyway, no, it, it's all good. It's just that I only have a PC, so I'm focusing on the PC. But yes, let's go straight to the good things, the great things, the amazing things. We have a huge performance improvement now across the board. We have the CJ4 mod working. We have it uh, with all the glass cockpits and all the cities, the sceneries, everything, and still locked at 60 FPS. It's an amazing feat. I wouldn't have thought it was possible, but has somehow Asobo managed it, so great job to them. And uh, yes, so regardless of which plane I'm flying, I'm getting performance benefits. Some more than others, some FPS have doubled, some have increased maybe 10%, so it's a very wide range. Your mileage may vary, but at the end of the day, it's a huge performance improvement. Yeah, that's, I think, safe to say in any aspect whatsoever. All right. The next good thing that I really like is the world map. If you can see here right in front of us, we have the world map, which looks pretty normal, right? But the beauty comes when you start zooming in. Because before, when you zoomed in, everything turned gray. And so you didn't have any idea anymore. Now though, that's a different thing altogether. As I zoom in, look at the details starting to pop up. But even more so, look at the world map still being there. And not only being there, but actually adding the different places, you know, the cities, the districts, or whatever these are. More details as you zoom in, even the real live traffic, which has been there already before. But the biggest thing is the map is still there and getting more and more detailed as you get closer. To the point that you can actually zoom into the airport you're thinking of starting in, and you can scout how the starting spots look like. Like, does that look like a GA ramp? Will I be uh, right next to a building? Will I be right next to the runway at that point? So now you can actually get a beautiful picture of where you're starting like that way, right? It's amazing. It's just amazing. And I didn't know what I was missing before when we had that gray thing. But cool. So that's a good thing. Now on to the bad stuff. When you load into the sim for the first time, you probably will notice that it looks different when you hover over your instruments, right? You'll find that the tooltips have become so much bigger and uh, personally, so much more obtrusive. So it's a bit of a bias on my end why I call this bad, but stay with me, okay? But yes, many of you will probably have had this problem. Hold question mark the lock and nothing is working, right? So how the heck are you going to move your instruments now? Well, it's, uh, it's something to do with controls. If you look in controls options, most likely you changed your profile on the, your mouse controls at one point. So for me, I created a zoom profile here, which if you look now, because they added new commands to here, if you look for cockpit interaction, you can see that nothing is bound. That's why it's not working. So you can either go back to the default. So you can see the default settings have mappings in there. Or you can add them yourself in your custom profile. But if you want to add them, just basically do it like that, right? Make sure the cockpit interaction, you can just copy it from the default one. But primary, left click, secondary, right click. That's okay. Those conflicts are not really true. Cockpit interaction increase would be 
mouse wheel up decrease would be mouse wheel down and I think that's the essential thing once you have those put in when you go back ah now it's not a question mark anymore right hold left click to lock and from there it does say move question mark to interact so I probably have something not still still not bound but if I move my mouse left and right it actually moves the heading that's actually very convenient right and then you get the degrees the actual degree setting this as a tooltip that's actually not too bad maybe you can get used to that as well i'm just personally not a fan of any kind of overlay or blinking lighting up things because it kind of ruins immersion for me but i must agree this is very very functional maybe i shouldn't categorize this as bad anymore anyway so this is the same here right adjusting the mixture cut off or which percentage it is or you can even use your mouse wheel still here. That still works. It depends. And then you can get all those other other uh, instruments as well. Tooltips. But what if you don't like it like me? What is your option? Well, you can have, which I which is something I prefer, go to accessibility. And you see this general options accessibility cockpit interaction system. Go to legacy. Yes, it, it sounds bad that it's called legacy because it's like the PC compatible version has been made legacy or the PC optimal version. So now if you go here, you won't have the lighting up blue and yellow things anymore, right? And you still have a tooltip, although you might notice something is wrong, something is missing. You don't get the percentage anymore of your heading, for example, right? So it's not really that helpful anymore can't lock onto it yeah so it's not as useful that's the nerf if you're using legacy then you will have had a bit of degradation in there but what i recommend anyway is just removing the tooltips completely i know some people don't like it but it is for me personally the most immersive experience no pop-ups no tooltips or whatever that does require that you're familiar with the plane you're flying but it isn't that the purpose of simming and from there yes you can adjust on your own and if you want to know what heading you're at well look at the dial and see where it is it might not be exact exact but it's going to be much more realistic so give it a go it probably will be frustrating in the beginning but uh, you'll come to like it eventually okay so stick with it another bad thing and this one is really bad but this is common and this is to be expected and this, this is not really the fault of uh, Microsoft or Asobo is uh, mod incompatibilities like this arrow that I'm flying. Right now, there is not yet a patch as of this recording. There's not yet a fully compatible Sim Update 5 version of the arrow from Just Flight. So we have a couple of bugs here and your mileage may vary. I've heard some people have cannot even control their uh, flight services. But for me, it, the, the bugs are more minor, like cannot open the window anymore, cannot open the cabin heater anymore, yeah, cannot move those dials, so some interactions seem to not have worked. But everything else seems to be fine for me. I've been able to fly this. So yes, just a reminder, guys. Remove all mods. Please, remove all mods. Because I will uh, dive into this a bit more later. Uh, keeping them there can and probably will do more harm than good for you so remove all mods for now and only add them back when you're sure that the mod author has uh, added compatibility for sim update 5 okay so err on the side err on the side of caution on this one okay trust me on this one it will save you a lot of headaches and this is one more of the bad things very bad things in my opinion but from this view, it doesn't look like it, right? It looks awesome. But let me show you. Oh, there it is already. So, I think it's what we can call like the pop-in issue. The scenery culling pop-in issue. Which is happening more often because I think they have changed the logic of when the scenery is getting rendered and de-rendered or whatever the term is. But basically, Look at this, if you're a track IR user like me, 
VR user or you just want to move your camera a lot because you want to see where the airport is for example like that you notice any difference right there right there look at the trees yeah look at the trees regardless where you look everything is getting re-rendered again and again and again ah oh, that is just irritating it seems like a very small thing and I know I'm just nitpicking here but it can actually contribute a lot to the immersion or the the ruination of the immersion to be specific because when you're looking like that looking for the airport and you see the trees growing in front of you doesn't feel quite real does it now granted that might have contributed to the increase to the improvement of fps overall but for me personally i'd rather fps be lower as long as those trees stay there you know don't start growing on me especially when i'm looking at you like that just keeps on and i'm not sure if this kind of detail will be captured by you the youtube video so i might be like a crazy person talking here but i hope you can see it and i hope you can understand my frustration about it so my hope is that asobo is made aware of this problem there's already a thread in the microsoft flight simulator forums about this last time i checked there were 100 votes so i'll link it below in the video description so you guys can vote as well if this is something you would like to get fixed as well but yeah i think especially for people who have strong enough rigs to keep everything rendered i wish we could get an option a slider you know to keep everything as is and don't keep on rendering it again and again i think it's also there if it's if you go outside yeah that's micro stutter is because things are loading back in see it see the trees getting rendered in real time that's very apparent here in this place the more trees you have the more uh, vegetation the more obvious it is so try and load up here in this airport spirit of st louis kilo sierra uniform sierra see the trees as you continue looking around they get re-rendered because the new logic is if you're not looking at it currently that then it can get removed from the buffer or whatever you call it so whenever you look at it again it gets re-rendered every single time that is bordering on the bad and ugly in my point of view let me know what you think about it is it a small thing for you am i just nitpicking should i just be thankful of the update i am thankful of the update but i think we should also look into constant improvement areas and this is definitely something that i think is a step backwards so i hope i really hope it gets fixed lastly on to the ugly stuff some would say that popping in issue is part of the ugly stuff and i would not disagree but the ugliest bit are the ctds looks like they have not gone away actually they have grown even more more chances of ctds more chances of winning the ctd lottery ctd is crash to desktop for those who are not familiar it basically means your game is crashing your pc is restarting or whatever it may be but more and more people are complaining about that and uh, i'm not really sure what is the cause so i'm not going to be able to save and uh, fix world hunger here guys okay just to set the expectations but i do have some uh, tips which you can try first and foremost is making sure that your live traffic settings your traffic settings are correct let me go and pause the game here <gasps> i said the g word pause the sim so if you go to general options and traffic make sure this is either real time online or keep that off never ever never ever use this ai offline thing this is actually in the known issues if you look at the current known issues this is part of the known issue that this can cause crash desktops because ai offline creates ai planes based on certain flight plans and it looks like those flight plans are corrupted of some sort so whenever those ai planes get generated 
depending on where you are, it can cause a crash to the desktop. Okay, so remove that first and foremost. That's going to be what I recommend. And I'm going to keep looking around here so I can really drive the point home of this popping issue. Okay, see how strong that pop those pop-ins are. While I'm talking here. The other ugly stuff, well, yeah, that's the main ugly stuff. But one more thing I can recommend to maybe alleviate that is I highlighted it a while ago, right? Remove all your mods, please. Clean out your community folder. Delete everything from the community folder. As in everything. Even if you think it's harmless, delete it. I've had people reporting that they've been getting crash desktops or weird uh, behaviors on the plane. And... In the end, it was caused by a livery. You would think it's a livery, it's harmless, right? It's just a paint job. But no, not really, not in this case. So please guys, before you try anything else, clean out your community folder. Make sure that you're not using offline traffic and uh, see from there again if you're still getting the CTD. Now, if you are, then I'm out of options for you. Go and check out the forums.flightsimulator.com to see how it's working. But to be to give a bit of contrast, I flew in the Sim Update 5 yesterday in the stream. I streamed for 3 hours, we traveled quite a bit. We did a full flight with the CJ4 mod, which has been updated for Sim Update 5 already. And I'm loving it. And uh it's been great so far. No CTD so far. Um, I might have jinxed it, but uh, yes, for me personally, no CTD so far. So, might be something else. Might be something else. Let me know in the comments. Maybe we can crowdsource this if you have more tips for people. Let me know. And uh, let's get this working, guys. We can manage this, yeah? Because right now we have a lot of teething pains, I think you could call it. With Sim Update 5 from the installation, the download, yeah, yeah, I guess you could also call that an ugly part. The downloading of the update was horrendous, partly because of the servers getting bogged down with all the traffic, with all the people downloading the updates. But at the same time, yeah, just a lot of installation related issues, right? Uh, installations getting stuck installations changing percentage like 95 percent and going down to 50 again like what the heck but yes it's not a polished uh, setup for me personally i think i got lucky in that front maybe because i live in singapore southeast asia server maybe it's not as bogged down not as much traffic in there maybe i don't know really but for me the the update process was not was not fast it was still slow it took me like an hour or so but there were no complications, thankfully. So it took me like an hour or two at most to do all the updates and then back. But yes, please, um, before you do the update even, remove all things from your community folder. You might be saying, you're saying, clumsy, you're saying remove all community mods and you have a, a plugin here, the Just Flight Arrow. You're using a Just Flight Arrow, which is not officially compatible with sim update 5 yet well that's just me <laughs> you can do whatever you want but do so at your own risk and if you get a ctd if you get weird issues then you have no one else to blame but yourself right so i that's uh that's something that i can blame myself for if ever this goes wrong but so far it's been okay like i mentioned minor bugs in the arrow for me yeah, no, windows not opening, the oxygen tank not working, I think, the cabin heater not working. But everything else seems to be working fine. Ooh, look at that. Is that an AI plane? Pretty cool stuff. That's either live traffic or another player. Given how fast he's going and how low he's going, to me it feels more like that's another player interesting oh and one last bit oh look at those pop-ins guys i hate it i hate it i already have terrain level of detail to 200 here 
So it's still happening. And I think some people are saying the higher that level of detail is in your graphic settings, the more you will get this issue because there are more trees to render, right? And it will take more time. So hopefully that helped. So hopefully that gave a bit of perspective to you guys. For those who are having issues, I feel for you. Hope you get to fix this. And if you find a fix, guys, please share it with the community, okay? In the Discord server we have, we have been trying to troubleshoot the different issues that people have. We've been managed to, we managed to help a lot of people. Many have fixed their issues, but yeah, new issues pop up. And this is just normal for a such a dramatic rewrite of the graphics engine. I guess it is to be expected. Right. Let's try to do a landing here just to see if everything is working. Because I've heard some people reporting that their arrows are not moving flaps, not uh, landing gears not moving or whatever. We are too high here. Let's go and land at the other one. 2-6 right. Okay. So like this. Pitch up. Oh yes, one more thing that changed. The trim. If I move my trim, I have an electric trim here. The trim is a lot more sensitive. In the arrow, I would say it's very welcome. Flaps are working for me. I have flaps assigned to a key in my Logitech uh, throttle quadrant. There it is. That's moving. There's the runway. So let's go ahead and turn towards that. So the gumps check. Gas, left tank, that's the fuller tank. Undercarriage, we have three green greens. Mixture is full, propeller is full forward. Switches, landing lights, fuel boost pump to low. And we are all set up for a landing. Flaps, 25 should be good enough. Looking good. It's just a line on the runway here. Yeah, look at the trim, guys. If I do one, you might be hearing that button, right, as I press it. That's the button. Uh, one press gives a significant change in the trim, which is something I really like. Because in the arrow before, it was a very minuscule, the adjustments. And then if you hold it, it gets too much. So it's either too little or too much in the changes. But here... It's very different. It's a lot more sensitive. So I'm liking it. But yes, I've heard that in some planes, I think in the Cessna 172, in the Cessna 152 in particular, the trim is a bit uh, finicky. It's a bit too much. Causes like 1,000 feet per minute climbs or descents depending on the trim. Oh, I'm a bit too high here. Let's go ahead and adjust here. Let's get one more notch of flaps. There it is. Good. Arrest the descent. Come on. So far, it looks looking good. <clears throat> yeah. So far, the aircraft is flying well. Flight dynamics seem okay. But yes, as I mentioned, your mileage may vary. We've had some people in the Discord reporting that they could not fly the plane at all. So let me know in the comments and let's crowdsource this information because we can get through this, guys. And when we do, we'll get amazing performance without any of the downsides. Just have to trust the process. Yeah, We are forever beta testers. <laughs> anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know if you share the same frustrations of you or if you are frustrated at other things. Or maybe even better, maybe you're happiest and you don't have any complaints with the update at all. So let me know and uh, I'll be waiting. Thanks for watching. Have a nice day. Clumsy flying and catch you guys in the next video. Hang in there. We can do this. Bye-bye.